Teaching. Welcome to Taylor's Teaching Tools. Taylor's Teaching Tools. Hi, my name is Taylor Tuttle. Welcome to Taylor's Teaching Tools. This is our first episode, and today we'll be discussing real life monsters. Now, some people like to comfort themselves in the thought that there are no such thing as monsters. But there are. There are many types of monsters. Monsters whose cold-blooded temperature and sluggish motions are evincing of a zombie. And just like a zombie, a single bite could kill a human. Of course, this is, hasn't happened since 1939, but this isn't just a monster tale. I'm going to show you the whole thing. And here with us today, with one of these monsters, is my dad, Jerry Tuttle. Thank you, Taylor, for having me on your show. And this is Picasso. He is a banded Gila monster from Arizona and Utah. Uh, he has been captive, bred and captive born, and is actually from Colorado. Now, is that why you can handle him without worrying about him biting you? Biting is always a worry. He came to me when he was very, very young. Venom properties of a Gila monster, they break down to many different proteins, which are used in diabetes as a treatment very successfully for diabetics, diabetes type 2, um, as well as they're starting clinical trials in lung cancer, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. So this is a very important animal in its own right. Gila monsters have venom glands right down here underneath their jaws. These teeth act to work the venom in in a very strong chewing bite. It's very difficult to get a Gila monster off once it's bitten. You notice also the bumps on a Gila monster. They have bumps actually on their skull and a very, very big olfactory conduit here in their nose that allows them to actually see heat imprints of a person's feet after they've walked. Does he have any other benefit to help survivability. On top of his head, right around his eyes, is called a Jacobson's organ. And what that does is that ties in with his tongue, which is flicking inside and outside. And what he does is he sticks that tongue on the roof of his mouth where the Jacobson's organ is located. And that gives him a sense of chemoreception. What chemoreception is, similar to um, is like a burning that the animal sends. So uh, they actually get a physical burn. There's a component there that causes the animal to be uh, aggravated, agitated. It's kind of like why a rattlesnake rattles, is it's a chemical burn. They also feel a thermal reception, which is their visual acuity tied in with their Jacobson's organ and their tongue will help them see images of heat around mammals. So he's kind of got some crazy patterns on him. Um, does he come in any kind of different color? Picasso is called Picasso because Picasso was a famous painter and he also created kind of weird design things. This is called, this pattern on here is a banded pattern. There's another type of Gila monster which is a reticulated pattern. Banded Gila monsters come from uh, Utah and Arizona some are found in California. The reticulated heel monsters are actually found in New Mexico, which is our state. Uh, they're found throughout Texas and um, in some parts of Mexico. Now, if you'll notice his skin, and what does that feel like to you? Uh, it feels like braille. It feels like braille. It's bumpy. That skin actually conducts moisture. It actually is leaky skin. So the water leaks into that skin. Now explain this fat tail. If you notice, his tail is rather large here. Um, what is the deal? Why is his tail so fat? The fat is where the actual fats of the animal are stored. 
so that as the animal eats, their tail increases in size, and so for the long periods that they go down and do not have availability to food, accessibility to food, that is actually stored in their tail and they live off that fat. The male seeks out the females every year and males um, will do this faithfully until they reach their maturity at about uh, 50 years. Um, the females have a shorter time where they're viable with eggs but they do and they try to try to get together every year and uh, um, they can lay up to 12 eggs. Uh, the males fight um, and the females um, will pick a partner based on the male's success. So the males will fight together, sometimes biting, sometimes pushing, rolling. Um, they don't seem to be bothered by the venom of the other Gila monster. Um, and then the winner gets the girl. Monstrous! Picasso is not a normal pet. Why Why do you have him? You're exactly right, Taylor. Picasso is not a pet. Picasso uh, is a permittable animal, which means you have to have a permit in order to have him. It's called a scientific and educational research permit, which was granted to me graciously by the New Mexico State Game and Fish Department. And for the uh, exclusive use in this type of educational outreach. Picasso makes a wonderful teaching tool and that's why we brought him on the show today. Thank you for joining us today on Taylor's Teaching Tools. Thank you dad for joining us and we'll thank Picasso here too. Thank you Taylor for having me on. It's tea chart time. Mammals are warm-blooded. Reptiles are cold-blooded. Mammals have skin. They also have hair on their skin. Reptiles have scales. Most mammals give live birth. Most reptiles lay eggs. Ta da da Taylor's teaching tools. 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 Ta da da Taylor's teaching tools.